This is Emily. Hey, Emily. This is Dave Portnoy calling. Uh, I'm recording you right now, but I've noticed a bunch of people. You're, it seems like you're sending. We have this pizza fest happening on Saturday, and you're reaching out to our advertisers, and you're basically sending an email that says to the effect, Dave's a misogenic racist. Do you want to defend yourselves advertising at this event, right? I'm sorry, what's your name, Dave? I'm sorry, who are you? I'm the guy you're writing the article about, Dave Portnoy. Oh, you're Dave Portnoy. Oh, hey, how are you? Good. Good. No, I'm not. I'm not I haven't said anything like that. I'm well, I, I, can, I can read, if you want, if you want, I can read what you actually sent. I have it. Yeah, read because I, I sent a bunch of notes, so I want to make sure I know which one. Okay, uh, we are planning to write about the festival and how and how some of the sponsors and participants have drawn criticism by seemingly to associate themselves with Dave Portnoy, who has a history of misogynic comments and other problematic behavior. I want to make sure that Blank had a chance to respond to this, since the company is the most prominent and their partners of his festival. Oh, that's the one I sent, to which was definitely the most pointed of them because. I really did want them to respond, and I was hoping to get something from them. Do you think that's fair? Like, I, I totally disagree with the assertions of what you said, that misogenic and all that stuff. So, like, it kind of backs people into a corner. So I'm happy to go over anything. I mean, you have – that is pretty pointed. You said you didn't do it. Then I have the exact evidence of you doing it. So no, no, I didn't say I didn't do that. I said I did. That was the one that was the most pointed. Well, no, you, you, that went before I – before I provided proof, you said you didn't really remember doing that, and then I read it to you, and you're like, oh, yeah, I did it that one time. So you did do it. Um, I'm happy to talk about the comments because, to me, it's kind of like torturous interference. Like, we're doing an event. Everyone's happy about the event. Uh, you know, I've raised $50 million for small business. I've held pizza. None of that. It's Dave's misogenic and problematic, and I'm happy to talk about it because, to me, nobody would like – if someone's going around sending that email to their sponsors, and again, you're not like questioning, you're, you're, it's almost like a statement of fact, this is what I am. Yeah, so um, I do want to talk to you about this. Um, and I just want you to know that <laughs> the story I'm working on, I'm working on with a colleague, um, and I want to kind of loop him on this because we did want to talk to you. And we were when, were you when were you going to reach out? We were planning on doing it tomorrow morning, hmm. but... Um, so you're going to write the article and then give me... Like, I've had that a bunch. People write no, a full no, article and then give me the points no, no, after. We're doing a bunch of, no, we're doing a bunch of reporting, and we wanted to make sure that when we finally did talk to you, we could really kind of present what, you know, or talk about things more fully based on... Like what? what like, it got. sounds like you have your opinion made of me based on no, that email. No, no. Uh -uh. So then how, if you don't have your opinion made of me, how do you say in an intro email, Dave Portnoy has a history of misogenic comments and other problematic behavior. That's how you introduce the email. Yeah. So look, I just want you to know that this is, not, I, I want to talk to you about this, but. Um, I don't you think you should talk to me before sending that email? What I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to you when we had we were to have some, some specific questions for you, and so I wanted to kind of have the full idea of what we. Were That's not a full about. idea. Like you, the, anybody who's rationally reading that email being sent to an advertiser would have to be like, "This is a hit piece, and you have your mind made up. Why else oh, would you no. put?" No, you, but you you call me in the intro. I'll say it again. Dave Portman has a history of misogenic comments and other problematic behavior. You didn't say Dave Portman raised $50 million for small business. Dave Portman saved thousands of pizza places. You didn't mention, you said it in a way that is putting sponsors on the defensive. So what I worried about when we contacted you, I was worried that we would have sort of one shot to talk to you, right? And so what I wanted to do is make everything we were going to, that we wanted to talk to you about before I reached out to you. That's why, that's why I was waiting to call you. Because you wanted to have everything together before you talked to me. I got to be honest, this sense like something who's going to hit me last second, be like comments and all this negative stuff. No, this is like, uh, this is kind of standard journalistic stuff. Like, we Unfortunately, to yes. I have been an open book and willing to sit down with anybody at any time. And this all stems, by the way, from a guy who wrote an article that for 13 years, 13.
15 years has been tweeting negatively about me because he doesn't like me. So half the stuff he talks about didn't even exist. The guy doesn't like me. And now you're going to run with this on the Washington Post. And anybody who's listening to this to think you were going to give me a fair chance when you're leading to our sponsors before you talk to me is crazy. Okay. Um, can we set up a time to talk tomorrow? Would that be okay? Like, I want to talk to you. I really do. I just want to make sure, like, I've got all my questions ready and stuff to talk to you about. Would that be okay? Can we set up a time? I want to see the article before you do it. No, it's not really. We, we can't do that. And why also, can't like, you do? Like, why can't I, you do that? I, because I, all I do when I what, is I validate all the stuff you're about to make up against me. I have been hit with the same things over and over, and they're all so wildly out of context. It's insane to say at this point in the game when you've already written to the sponsors. Let me say it again: Dave Portnoy has a history of misogynic comments and other problematic behavior i catch you off guard on a phone call and now you're like no we planned on talking to you tomorrow like the washington post which is a wildly left-leaning publication you have things you've said you hate trump you hate elon not that i'm those people to think you're gonna give me a fair shake i wasn't born yesterday i mean i was gonna i wanted to talk to you and as part of my reporting like we have written this story we won't have written it by the time we talk to you like this is talking to you i would hope is going to be a big part of our reporting and, and a big part of the story so i'm really hoping i do that but i want to give you a chance if we're gonna you know anything specific we're gonna include in the story but i just don't have it all in front of me because i'm working with another reporter and i want to make sure that we you know have as full conversation as we can what have. was the thesis of this article you're writing thesis is i'm just reporting it's just you know it's just you're an interesting guy this you have an interesting role in this industry and we just want to look at it that's all it that's seemed it. like you were going to try to shame sponsors for being associated with me and put them in a box when i know they all love me but nobody wants the washington post writing an article sponsor associated with misogenic you know, racist piece of shit. Nobody wants that. And you, that's what you're trying to do. And even on this call, it's pretty clear that's what you were trying to do. You don't have the facts I don't for me. What I might have said on this call that would give you that impression. My, all I've said on this call. Well, we I started the call. We started the call with you saying you never said anything negative. And then I read back an email like, oh, I did on that one. I said that I sent a number of emails and that one was the most pointed because I was really trying to press them to respond. But I, I, I really, in what I've been, in what I've been asking people about, I'm just asking people what they're doing. I'm just asking people about, you know, how they came to participate and how they view it. That's now, that's but you could have just as easily said, what's your involvement? Are you proud to be involved with somebody who has done so much for the pizza and service industry? Right. That could have been an email. Can we set up a time tomorrow to talk? I mean, really, I, I want to I wanna get into all of it. Well, I don't know if I trust you yet. So I, I'd want more. I want to see everything that you've been asking these people. Like, again, I don't think there's any. The generally why I don't do this at the last minute is because if you really wanted to get my perspective, it wouldn't be me calling you. You would have already reached out to me in a fair manner. Hey, hey sorry about that. I got it like a call that came in in the middle of it. Oh, no worries. Okay. No, I was just saying, I was going to call you. I really wanted to talk with you. I want to have a really full conversation. That's why. So can, what time? Can I'm, I'm more than willing to have an open conversation about anything if the okay. article is not written. I'm afraid with what I'm seeing already here, all it does is it validates a hit piece. I swear. <laughs> I have not written. <laughs> have not written the story. Believe me. Have you made your mind up about me? We're, we're in the reporting phase. I don't, you know, I can't. Uh, for me to say, and I'm also I'm working with somebody else. But that seems like a pretty straightforward question that have you made your mind up about me? If you can't answer that, I no. Can say, I can say I have not made my mind up about you. Then I why would you include that in the in the email to sponsors? Because I was hoping for a dialogue with them. You know, it's sometimes you have to say something like, this is like, you know, it, it's sort of a reporting tactic when you want someone to respond. You kind of have to indicate that there might be something negative, and then you get them to engage. That's all I was trying to do. I really wanted them to engage with me. That is a sad state of journalism if that's a tactic that you have to, well, what I would say is make up something about somebody. That there might be 
some, there might be something negative. And so you want to give people a chance to respond and have a conversation with you. That's what I was trying to do. But at the same time, you're saying you don't know that that's actually truth. So you're, you're leading with something that you haven't done enough research to know if it's valid. I'm saying there might be a fuller picture and that's what I want to talk to you about. And I want to set up a time tomorrow morning, maybe like 10. Are you free at 10? I got to do more research on you. I, I still don't have the vibe that you're go, like that you're going to give me any sort of fair shake. Okay. Well, that's so let, fair. I can tell you, and I'll, let me tell you the name. If you want to like, you want to look into me, you want to look, my colleague um, that I'm working with on the story, his name is Tim Carmen. He's also a food reporter at the post. And it, I'd love for both of us to be on the call and just, you know, we can talk. Um, I'm happy to, you know, I, I definitely want some on the record stuff, but if there's stuff you want to tell me that you want to tell me on background or off the record, we can talk about all. You know, no, I'm always on the record. There's nothing I would okay. ever say that is off the record. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Um, okay. So um, maybe you want to say tentatively 10 o'clock tomorrow? Yes. I'll confirm tentatively. Now, the one thing I'd always ask, just like this is being recorded, I would record the interview I tomorrow. Actually- have a chance to hit record so i didn't i'm not recording this call but i get that you are that's totally fine i always anticipate that you know what i'm saying is going to be recorded or be used i get that okay so that that is a good step in establishing some degree of trust so if you're fine with me recording tomorrow then let's do uh 10 a.m tomorrow okay do you want to call me on this number sure yes okay okay great all right all right we'll talk tomorrow at 10. okay sounds good Bye.